All right, we're on a two cabin, single head, single shaft diesel sedan cruiser. Uh, this is a Nimbus 305, and this is a detailed walkthrough video. Dan Jones is my name. Welcome to Dan's Boat Life. Um, starting the walkthrough right now. Um, yeah, and I guess the purpose of this video is to see whether um, this is a boat for all climates. And funnily enough, we're in a place with all climates so far today. We've had beautiful sunshine, moderately warm, uh, great for the drone. And now we have driving rain and about one degrees. We're in um, uh, Lake Waki Topo, is that, is that right? I keep, I'm struggling with my pronunciations. We're in Queenstown, we're in New Zealand, Aotearoa. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get better at this, I promise. Um, and yeah, so this being a Swedish designed boat, is designed for changeable weather conditions. And, and I really believe, I, I know that the Nimbus brand is going gangbusters in New Zealand because you guys have caught on to this. I, I, I believe the Aussies are gonna catch on to this style of Nimbus. You've already discovered the T-Series and the outboard Nimbuses and how great they are. Uh, and I'm seeing them having some success in Sydney and around Australia. Um, but I see a place for this style of Nimbus in Tasmania, in the southern parts of Australia, where we get weather like this. So, um, see if you agree with me, leave a comment in the description uh, or in the comment section of the video, and um, yeah, let me know what you think. So anyway, this is the 305. If you wanna see a test drive video, follow the link coming up on the screen or I'll put that in the description. That's gonna be separate to this, or just subscribe and hit the bell notification, that'll come up when it is ready. Um, but I'm just gonna sort of work my way around the cabin um, and explain everything uh, I see. Immediately, the feeling uh, upon entering this boat, it's warm and inviting. Um, and I, I'm gonna put that down like it is, it is bad weather. We got one, two, three, four windows on the roof just here. And then we've got wraparound glass all the way around. Now, Mitch, don't forget to use the joystick if you need to go up so everyone can see that roof. Um, because these ones here and here, they open, so they are manual, slide open, like so and like so. I'm not gonna do them right now because it's pouring with rain. And this one here also opens, all right? So this will open, this will open, this will open. And here we have a sliding helm door. So that's super neat. So that's great from a parking and maneuverability perspective and also having all this from a comfort perspective. The other thing, that you can't notice, but I'm certainly enjoying. I got a diesel heater on this boat. This is, today's the first time in my life I've actually got to use a diesel heater. And this is great. Like it's just, we've got outlets scattered right throughout the boat. Um, that's a jet engine going overhead. We are near Queenstown Airport. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's just heating up the boat and we're, we're comfortable. Like we can just cruise around in a light jacket or just in a t-shirt if necessary. Um, yep, that's a jet going right overhead. So anyway, working my way around the boat, here you've got this beautiful teak finish. And we've got some chart storage just under here. We do have down lights. These ones here are, have the red option just on this side, obviously, so it doesn't ruin uh, the skipper's night vision. We've got a leather wrapped stainless steel grab handle just here, and then individual blinds that go down around the windows like so. There's an external cover for the front windscreen. And I've got speakers here and here for the stereo. There's more as we make our way through the boat. Um, a bit of a theme for this boat is the um, clever use of space. So all the furniture has got multiple uses and then they've, they've put like sensible design ideas here, there and everywhere. So you can maximize um, the available space that we have. So here's the first example. At the moment, this is in the dining setup. So um, this, this boat's great for a couple and it would be fine for mum, dad and kids. Um, that sort of scenario would be perfect. You can always take an occasional extra couple of guests and underway, they can seat outside. But once you're going over that sort of five number, one, two, three, four, five, you got people out on the back deck. Still okay, because we'll get to that in a second. We have uh, clears out there. But this is in the dining function at the moment. But if you're driving, all you have to do is like so, and we've got three seats facing forward. And notice how the seat, it elevates. When it does that, 
your, your driving position is quite high, so your view out through the windows is gonna be quite enjoyable as well. You can, when you're in that position, stand and pop your head out the window. That is possible from this standing position just here. So making my way back to the saloon, hopefully you can see all that, Mitch. This table, again, it's multifunction, so we've got some drink holders just here. We've got this beautiful teak on both sides, so it's finished to the same finish on both sides of the table, and you've got this ledge going around, which is gonna stop things from falling off the table when it's like that, and then you have a smaller ledge on the main face of the table, and it's gonna be good for four plates, um, you know, setting for four people for dinner. Now, this will also drop down, so it is a telescopic leg, just here, you just undo one and two, and it'll drop down to this height, then there's gonna be a cushion which goes over that, and you can turn this into a bed. So yes, you could actually sleep more than four adults on this boat, so perhaps another kid uh, or two kids here would be doable. Um, now, this seat here, good for two people, and underneath it, we have the first fridge. So that's a drawer fridge, as you can see just here. That's a 12 volt fridge. In the corner, just there, we've got a little spot which is uh, just good for putting bits and pieces. We have a reading light, and then you could put books there, you could put drink bottles, so it's kind of handy for anyone who's sitting in this area. Um, next thing worth pointing out, we've got this teak finishing wrapping around both sides of the boat. It's just beautiful to touch, it's really, really nice. And we have a down light here, and then there's mood lighting underneath, and it's a warm light. It's, it's just, it creates a really nice vibe on a, on a grumpy day like today. But now, notice this, we have the drop down blinds here, and we have the curtains. So this is gonna be good in hot weather too. You know, you can really knock out some heat load using that, create privacy, or a place like here, if you wanted to keep the warmth in, I guess, on a cold night. Now, whilst we're talking about blinds, you won't see easily, but from here, see how these pull out of the roof? That is for pulling across the windows. So each window has one, same again here. So I can pull them across and protect the roof from any heat load that's annoying you on a hot day. I can see these windows have got a little bit of tint in them though. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna move my way around to the galley. So make sure you can sort of get all of this in shot, Mitch, so everyone can see, because there's a few things to talk about. Um, the galley area is, the floor is all level here, and then you step up one little ledge of about six inches into the saloon on port, and then you step up a proper step at the helm on starboard, which is about a foot just so you know. Um, but starting, I guess starting at the aft edge of the galley, on the wall just here, as you come in from the sliding door, I've got the control for the gas heater, um, master vault controls here, all my light switches and a gas detector. I've got mirroring the port side on the star, but I have this handy little storage area, good for drink bottles, wallets, those sorts of things. I've got a small little down light immediately over the cooker just here. So I got two burner cooker. Now the only problem I see with this is this curtain, it's kind of in the way. So I think I would be doing something with that if I was cooking, like rolling it up, it's not the end of the world, but just obviously don't go uh, cooking some, some food and then set that on fire. Um, so you got your you, you, your twin hot plates just there, and I've got this textured or stainless steel slats just here, which seems to serve as a sensible drying spot because that drains into our twin high quality stainless sinks. Isn't that lovely? And what's good about this is you could um, wash things up. You could, actually, you could actually just throw some plates in here and still use this as an operational sink underway if you were just a bit lazy and you could get to the washing a little bit later. So um, in terms of what we've got going on down here, this is a drawer, so that's a pretty deep drawer. These um, uh, cutting boards slash sink covers could 
could slide in here. Um, this is a gas oven just here. Nothing's there because that's the technical part of the stove behind. This one goes like so, and there's a bit of storage in there and also some space underneath the sink. Um, there's a bin in this one, and but you've got to check this out, like all Nimbuses. Get in closer and have a look at that. Isn't that lovely? I'll just see if I can point this out. They do this on all their boats, but they always go above and beyond in terms of their cutlery and their settings and their cushions. Everything's Nimbus logo, high quality, good stuff, which is great to see. And your, um, your other one just there. So that's nice. Now, I said that was the first of our fridges. Our other fridge is just here. So we've got an isotherm. It's got a little freezer drawer in it. And that's just underneath the skipper. Um, and then you get to the helm chair. So it's worth noting when you are, this is another thing that Nimbus does about making sensible use of small spaces. It, they, they really do think about every little available piece of space on this boat. So if you are cooking up a lunch and you just need that extra little bit of countertop, it's here for you to use. It's great. I love that. So that can go back like that. That locks into place. And the helm seat, um, there is an adjustment here. It slides back and forward. So you do have some adjustability on that and you've got the flip up bolster. If you're interested in how it goes, there is a test drive, subscribe. It's separate to this video. Um, now, underneath the helm is how you activate your systems at the beginning of the day. So underneath, I'll cut to a shot of this, Mitch. There is um, all your fuses and your engine auxiliary and your heavy auxiliary um, battery switches. So that's all there. You've got your water tank uh, gauge as well, fuel tanks at the dash, and all your fuses, which are just pencil fuses. They pop out and you just push them back in if they blow. Um, and there is a fire extinguisher in that location. Nice teak flooring just here at the helm. And then underneath the helm, uh, or the dash itself, there's an opening hatch, which just gets you in behind the helm for the wiring. But the helm itself, we'll just go through all the systems we see here. All right, starting on starboard, I'll go from starboard, starboard and work my way across. It's a Volvo digital throttle. So you have the digital ignition, start, stop. Above that, you've got your thrusters just here. So you have a stern and a bow thruster. This is your spotlight and then your spotlight control. These two here are your trim tabs. This is, it's a single shaft, so it's a single throttle. Um, that's when you see this, it just means single engine as opposed to the dual with all your normal gauges on it. Um, road counter, so that gives you, it's a chain counter essentially. VHF, just here, this one's a BNG. Um, we've got quite a large Simrad display, so multifunctional display, you can, you know, put what you like on it as all the equipment does these days. Um, and here is the Simrad autopilot. So this, this boat obviously has an autopilot. Um, on this side, we've got an auxiliary, horn, the navigation light, um, anchor light. The wheel is adjustable. It's got the Nimbus logo. It's nice. Uh, I think that's like stainless in the middle there. And then on the starboard side, the digital diagnostics for the Volvo Penta with fuel flow, um, uh, tank level, all that sort of stuff. And then on the bottom panel here, we've got a demister for the windscreen. We've got the windscreen wipers. We've got our stern anchor operation. So that's gonna be optional stern anchor. That's a pretty popular thing um, in Scandinavia. And then bilge pumps one and two, bow anchor just here, instruments control, and then bow thruster uh, power on and off to activate power to the thrusters. Another leather wrapped handle just here. So that's stainless steel grab handle one cup holder, two cup holder, medium size, and then a little storage nook here, which is fine for like throwing your phones and what's and that sort of thing. Um, and that's a compass, looks like a Plastimo compass just there. And a nice textured uh, sort of gray finish we see in front of the dash. Um, this is not gonna provide any negative glare. You know, you do have glass forward of that, but I think the way it's been positioned and the fact that it's got black behind it. It's not really going to provide any issues with too much sunlight. Let's go and have a look at the aft deck. Okay, so welcome to the alfresco dining area. 
Um, it, it, it is set up as our all-weather dining room right now. It is two degrees outside. As you can see, it's, it's miserable, but I've got the warm air wafting out here from the cabin. I'm actually quite comfortable. And these clears, they're of a lighter construction designed to be deployed with ease, and, and they certainly are. We did exactly that today. When the weather changed, we rolled them down. The fittings that they use, they're not your average fittings. They're these sensible designed little stainless things that pop into the floor, slide in, and you can secure the, the cover to the floor very quickly, which is great. Um, first, first thing worth, no, worth noting, it's an offset cabin. So we have the walking forward and aft on starboard, and then on port, you just have a little bit of space to walk up the side, but it is offset. So this is how you, go, you would go forward if you wanted to, and you could exit by rolling this up. But anyway, what do we have? Um, we've got an opening latch just here. So this opening latch gets us into a lazarette, a storage lazarette, um, quite deep, good for fenders, good for rope, that sort of thing. Um, all your boaty stuff can go in there. We've got our kid and dog door just here. This one is a decent size and it's infilled with perspex. As you can see, it's a stainless steel wrap around. The transom platform, which I'm not gonna go out the back on today, so we'll have to cut to some shots of that. It's about a, a little over a meter long. It's got uh, a fender all the way around externally, like all Nimbuses do. Um, so you can bump into the dock and you'll have some protection there. And then there is a holder, for, a stainless steel holder for four of your custom fenders, which have Nimbus holders and look really good at the back there. Now this seat here will flip up so we can get into the engine bay. If you want to see the engine bay, like hang around to the end of the video and we will have a look in there. Um, we've got this beautiful table. This is all teak with the Nimbus logo in there. Once again, multifunction. We can do a place setting for eight people and you've got a good grab handle uh, on this stainless wrap around on each side. So that's nice and handy. Now, below this seat here, we have storage for the gas locker um, as well. And I'm not sure if there's, there's also a little bit of storage under there as well. Um, so we've got some courtesy lights. So there's a, one, at least one courtesy light illuminating the floor here and there's others going around the deck. We have a lovely um, custom boat hook just there. And it all, it's also worth noting that the roof design extends all the way out to where I am sitting. So that makes this, this area very, very usable in changeable weather conditions. And it also gives you excellent sun protection. And we have two down lights here and here, speaker there, speaker there, and grab handles on each side to hold on to when you're going forward. So welcome to the master cabin, guys. It, like, who would have thought on a 30-foot boat you would have this much space like just for perspective like this bed's huge you know we've got so many options lying this way okay look at this i got so much space this foam is comfortable um i got one two three opening portholes and i've got a deck hatch just here opening forward so that's a emergency exit and some ventilation. Um, we do have the heater venting into this cabin as well. So it's beautifully comfortable right now. And I've also got a little deck vent just here, which is just uh, stops the, the water coming in, but there I can feel the air passing through right now. Um, so what do we have here? We've got a little bit of teak with some down lighting underneath here. Each porthole has its own blind. I've got a beautiful little corner spot just up on the starboard side, good place for phones or books or what have you, reading light in each, in either corner. So I think what they're intending is for people to sleep in this direction uh, because you've got reading lights on either side so then you can pad up each corner with cushions and you could absolutely sit up in bed just here. So that's really no problems. And as you may have already noticed, there's an infill cushion just here. So if you want to expand this area and have a place to get changed, uh, like when that's more sort of more handy, when you're using the boat in day boat mode, people might come down here to put their swimmers on and utilizing this space for as a changing room, it's, it's kind of handy. 
Uh, finally, we have quite a large hanging locker just on the port side. So there's storage space on the top so you could put beach towels just there. Just double check that it is hanging. And yep, that looks like a hanging locker to me. So that's plenty big and the light switches are there as well. So yeah, what an amazing cabin. So here's the kiddies cabin or the guest cabin. It's a, you know, neat double size. Um, you can just sit up in bed here probably a little bit easier on this side, but you've got reading lights just there, you've got strip lights there, you've got down light there. We have this opening porthole with a blind. You've even got this little hidey hole area, which is actually quite quite deep. So you could, you could actually throw a few, few bags in there if you need it, and there's even a power plug in here. So yeah, you're not gonna feel like you've got the short end of the stick going in this cabinet. It's still quite nice. I note that the door is a curtain on this one, so it's naturally adds to the more open feeling that you get when you come downstairs. There's two hooks just there for, for jackets or towels, and then you've got a storage locker as you enter the cabin as well. So yeah, this is great for a boat of this size, absolutely suitable. So somebody from Nimbus can tell me this, but this feels like the same toilet compartment in the C11, which is a really fantastic toilet compartment. You've got this separate stand-up shower module, so you can stand up and have a shower, or you sit down on this seat, which is also protecting the loo. You've got proper uh, shower, which goes up down here. There's the, the mixer just there, it's a hot shower. I'm feeling the hot air come through the, uh, the heater right now. Um, and you've got a sink just here, a couple of hooks, place behind each, the, both the toilet and the sink area to store your toiletries bags, and then a little opening locker just in here where the toilet roll goes, and a mirror just up there. Okay guys, so on these um, smaller Nimbuses, they do uh, kind of like an engine box arrangement. So you can see the insulation here, here, and on either side, and it is sort of boxed in, so you see the V-drive set up just here. The engine is facing that direction. There's a V-drive that sends the shaft out underneath this. And then you've got the exhaust going around like so. Um, this is your raw water, uh, seawater strainer. So if you suck something up and you're having some cooling issues, you can check it here. This is your, uh, uh, your filter just here. And then you can top up oil and coolant just there. This Behind the motor is actually another convenient storage area uh, because of the design of the engine. Pass me the camera and I can just let everyone see that. So there you go. You can remove these bulkheads in the Nimbuses. So for servicing and access, it is possible. And also opening the engine bay is really easy because of that large gas strut. You, once you've just undone the uh, engine latches and hinged up this seat here, it'll just pop up. It's even got an emergency tiller by the looks of it. Isn't that cool? Very, very smart.